shot or any kind of vaccine, and that is wash your hands with warm soap and water often, saying the happy birthday song twice. Keep your fingers out of your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, and make sure you cover your cough and your sneeze. We've been doing this for hundreds of years, and it works, okay? So make sure you're doing all that. Well, what else do I need to tell you? Pick your nose often. <laughs> Hookedonscience.org has a free experiment each week. Now, I've worked at all three TV stations that you get here in this market. I used to work at KFBS 12 from 2003 to 2007. Then I switched over to Channel 6 from 2008 to 2019. And now I work at Channel 3, WSIL out of Southern Illinois. I've been there since 2020. You can watch me fill in weather there, and you can watch my science segment every Saturday morning. If you're like most people, you don't watch TV anymore, you can go to hookedonscience.org and you'll get the experiment of the week there just like you will on any TV station across America. Now, take pictures today. Post your pictures at Hooked on Science on Facebook, Instagram, as well as HOS Mr. Science on Twitter. And I'll enter you into a drawing for my new book. It just came out. It's called Big Science Experiments for Little Kids. It includes some of my favorite science experiments. I'll also enter you for uh, a free science kit. So, Hooked on Science on Facebook, Instagram, HOS Mr. Science on Twitter. I'll have a post there. You just post it in the, end of the comments, okay? I'll give you 24 hours. I'll put you in the drawing. I'm also working on two other books. One has to do with weather experiments. That'll be out next fall. And my book about snakes will be out this fall. So, look for those books that will be coming out soon. You'll get updates at Hooked on Science on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and at Hooked on Science. Okay, underwater, that's what this year's theme is all across America, except for two states, California and Illinois, they do a different thing. But here in Kentucky, we go by the national theme, and it's all about underwater stuff. So if you know anything about underwater, raise your hand if you know anything about water. It doesn't have to be the ocean. It could be underwater in a creek, it could be underwater in your river. Anything at all? What do you know about the, anything underwater? Yeah, you There are animals that live underwater. Now, I have an animal up here that lives underwater, but it won't live in the Ohio River or your backyard creek. Anybody know what kind of animal this is? Be careful, because it bit a kid the other day. Oh, wait, but they don't bite. How do they, de how do they defend themselves? They puff up to scare their enemies, and they have these spikes on them that you don't want to get close to it, because if you go kiss a puffer fist, Fish. It's gonna hurt, right? You wanna kiss a puffer fish today? No. Okay, so what is this? I already told you, but do you wanna tell me anything else about it? Yeah. No, anything else about it? Anybody wanna come up and hold a puffer fish today? Ah, uh, when you hold my puffer fish, you're gonna put it in the palm of your hands like this and feel the prickles. Now, these are not poisonous. Well, one kid did pass out, but nothing. Okay. Right? We're not throwing it. We're not using it as a ball, but you can put it in the palm of your hand and feel a prickliness from a puffer fish. Okay, let's see. Who do I select this one? How about looking for the meanest kid? Her. Okay. Come on. You're going to stand right here. I want you to hold it up, hold your hand, turn around so everybody can see your face. Just like that. You're going to hold out your hand, both of them. I want you to do both of your hands, since your hands aren't as big as mine. Place it like that, and there you go. What does it feel like? Can you explain? Huh? Really pokey. So what happens if you run into one of those things? Oh, yeah. What do you think might happen? Is it going to poke you? Yeah? Okay. Are you looking at it? Are you looking at the puffer fish? It's not going to hurt you, I promise. Are you looking at the puffer fish? There you go. Smiling at you. Another person, we'll pick a boy this time around, you may sit back down, and then we're going to move on to our next little creature that you might find in the Amazon rainforest underwater. How about you? Yeah, you. Come on up here. And at the very end, if you would like to come up and hold the puffer fish and get a picture with it, I'm going to give you that opportunity. So just come up, do this, smile, and then move on. We'll say that at the very end. Turn around right here. It's okay, he won't hurt you, I promise. It only comes alive at the time. Okay, turn around. You look very timid for this. Hold out your hands like that. Okay. Oh, I promise you'll be okay. And. Oh, you okay? You good? Hey, no, you're okay. No, oh, you're good. You may go sit back down. One more helper. How about you? Yes. Hold out your hands. 
stands like this. I promise he's not going to bite when you stand right over here. You're going to hold the cover. What does it feel like? I know he is very spiky. And this is what a real puffer fish looks like. I'm going to walk around with him. At the very end, if you would like to come get your picture with a puffer fish, you're more than welcome. You can get one posted there at the Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. You know, you need those drawings for those free science kits and copy of that new book. Yeah, it's going to hurt. There you go. It's pretty cool. It feels like a very spiky basketball. Very spiky basketball. Oh, it won't hurt you, I promise. You're in the library. The library is the same place. So nothing's going to happen to you here. Same place. So at the very end, if you want to hold it, you're more than welcome to come back up. We'll do just that in the meantime. We need to get to some other things. In three, two, one, flat tire. One more thing that I want to show you is something that's got some very sharp teeth to it. We find this in the Amazon rainforest. It's called a piranha. So the piranhas love to eat third graders. Any third graders in here? This is a real, real piranha. You'll notice the sharp teeth. Since these teeth are like razor blades, I can't let you hold this one. This one will really, really cut into you. You'll notice what the piranha looks like. You don't want to be in a bathtub of piranhas. You know that they are meat eaters. They love to eat that with curvy hair. You want to kiss him? <laughs> so you'll see him right here. This is a piranha. He's a third grader, so to meet him. So those are my two underwater creatures that I wanted to show you today. They're pretty cool, they're amazing, they're fun, they're awesome. But I just want to quickly read you one of my favorite books. It's part of the Quirkle series. It goes by really fast, it's nothing long. And it's called Underwater Ugly, and it talks about the animals that live underwater and how they have to have a certain kind of way to breathe and live. So Underwater Ugly is one of 26 books, one for each letter in the alphabet, that teaches kids about science. It's part of the Purple series. You can learn more about it by going to purples.com. So this is the U, Underwater Ugly. Underwater Ugly is the most understanding of all the quirkles. He has lots of friends because he has an uplifting personality and is never unhappy. Underwater Ugly is an expert on life underwater. So he knows all about the things that live underwater. One beautiful summer day, Underwater Ugly was on his way up town to visit his mom and home. We had not gone far when he heard an unhappy bird yelling in front of Hutt's drugstore. Ugly had an uneasy feeling as he hurried to see if he could help. So what did he find? An unhappy bird. Do you think this bird is unhappy because it didn't get his candy bar? You think it might be? Let's see why he's unhappy. Uzzy Umbrella Bird was very upset. Rosie Robin was making fun of the umbrella shape on Uzzy's head. You always walk around with an umbrella, said Rosie. You look utterly ridiculous. Uzzy Umbrella Bird began to cry and ran off to the ocean. Underwater Uzzy followed Uzzy. Is the robin being nice? No. No. You know, I think nice to say, be quiet, right? At the end of the day. Suddenly, Underwater Ugly heard a loud cry. Oh, help, help! Ugly, could you see Uzzy Umbrella Bird's head bobbing up and down as he cried? Underwater Ugly jumped into the ocean to save Uzzy. Why do you think he's crying? Why do you think he's upset? Oh, what's your hypothesis? Because, um, the um, other boy was making fun. He was making fun of him, but suddenly, he may not be the same as all the other creatures in the ocean. Let's figure it out. My goodness, Ozzy, what are you up to? Why did you jump into the ocean? Ozzy said, I'm going to move to the bottom of the ocean and live with the fish. Fish are more understanding. They won't make fun of me for having an umbrella on my head. Underwater Ugly said, Ozzy, you cannot move to the bottom of the sea and live with the fish. You are a bird. A bird cannot live underwater. You cannot breathe in the water, Ozzy. That's the reason why he was struggling. Because birds don't live underwater, do they? No, they do not. Uzzy Umbrella Bird did not understand. Why not, Ugly? asked Uzzy. Underwater.
water ugly is plain. Unfortunately, Uzzy, you do not have gills. Fish, like all other animals, breathe oxygen. Fish have gills that allow the oxygen to pass from the water into their bloodstream. Uzzy, as a bird, you get oxygen through your lungs. Does anyone have special gills that allow them to go underwater? You do? <laughs> us, the umbrella bird, was still upset. I am just an ugly old bird. I want to be a pretty fish and live in the sea. Ugly continued to explain, us, because you have an umbrella, you are unlike any other animal. You are very special. Uzzy's spirits were uplifted, and he learned being different was just fine. Unexpectedly, Rosie Robin appeared at the ocean. Rosie said, I am so sorry, Uzzy. I should not have made fun of you. Please forgive me. Together, underwater Uzzy, Rosie Robin, and Uzzy Umbrella Bird walked to Uzz Grove store for ice cream and soda. It had been an unusual day in the land of Quirksville. See, the notes of that book was pretty quick, and it proved to us that we need to be nice to each other. And we know that birds don't live underwater because they don't have what on their sides? Gills. And those gills take the water from the oxygen from the water and puts it in the bloodstream of the fish so that they can live underwater. You get the whole point. Everything's underwater, right? Okay. Speaking of water, you know, the ocean is full of water. And the ocean's waters actually do something pretty cool. Oops, hold on. I've caught a fish. Look. In my net. Sure, that's over here. So what I have is a balloon here that has a bunch of toilet water in it. Well, you don't believe it? Oh. Here? Yeah. Well, you know what? Speaking of water, the water is everywhere in the ocean, in the creeks, in the streams. The water you drink today was around during dinosaur times, and dinosaurs pooped and peed in the water you drink it today. <laughs> Gross, right? <laughs> How do I know that? Because it's something called the water cycle. It rains here on Earth. The sun slurps it up. It goes from a liquid to a gas goes back to a liquid and precipitation falls. It's been doing that here on Earth since day one. So we have recycled water for a very long time. I need a kid helper to come up and hold a balloon that has the water in it, that has the water in it. Now, I will tell you this, we're gonna add a flame to both balloons. <laughs> this is going to help us understand, you know, the earth is warming, like we know that. It's a natural process. The earth goes through warming periods and cool periods. Did humans make it a little worse? Yeah. Was it going to be warm whether we were here or not? Yeah. Should we be good stewards of earth? Yes. So let's make sure we're taking good care of it. But I'm going to show you what the ocean does when it comes to at least taking the heat from the atmosphere. Uh, well, I think, have you been up? So no, come on. You don't mind getting wet, right? Okay. So I want you to hold it like you would have held the uh, puffer fish. Yeah, just like that. Be careful, it's heavy. There's a lot of toilet water in there. <laughs> so now I've got to blow up this balloon to match that one. I've been vaccinated 500 times on pages three. But still, we got it all. Oh. Is that the same size? Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention, I've also had COVID on top of all that. So I've got natural antibodies and human Is that enough? No. Um, how about that? No. Okay.
I think you're out of fluid. There we go. What's going to happen when I get that close to this one? What's going to happen when I get it close to this one? It's going to pop. You think your toe is going to pop? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes. So everybody can see. Let's go ahead and go on stage so everybody can see a little bit better. Oh, wait. Steps over there. Steps over there. And we're going to go on stage so everybody can see. I didn't know she was right there, Asher. Just stand on this side, right here. How about the guy with the water? He's going to hold it out like this. There we go. And you are going to stand over here, just like that. Okay, now, so water in there, air in here, water and air in there. Okay? So I'm going to get the flame close to this one. You say it's going to explode, right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, no. Oh, no. Maybe.
actually six, because I need a strong person to hold this up above her head. And then you all are going to jab pencils through it. Um, you think she's going to get something wet? Yes. No. Do you want water to be all over her? Yes! Yes! Well, this is Miss Melissa. Miss Melissa, what do you do at the library? Okay, so do we want to get her wet then? Yeah. I'm going to come down and pick six helpers. We're going to start with this guy right here. He's going to be the holder of this up above her head. He looks like he's strong. He eats a lot of dirt. Yeah. Let's go, Eli. So we're going to hold this up above her head like that. Okay. Not yet, just brush your arms because we'll get tired now. Next, I'm going to grab one, two, three, four, five helpers. And they're going to come up and put the pencils through the bag. How about you? You'll be one. Don't go do it yet. Get up there and put the pencil down so you don't fall into it. I've got two boys. I better pick two girls helpers. Two girls. Oh, Mitchell. How about you? Mitchell Brown, you are the How about you, the blue Mitchell shirt? Brown, you are the I need two more helpers. How about that guy in the red shirt right there? Can you go ahead and go up on stage? Don't let your pencil, please. And I need one more helper that's going to put a pencil through the bag. How about that? Did she pick her nose a lot? Yeah. Okay. And your brother's up there? So how about you go on her other side? You two go on this side over here. There we go. All right, I'm so sorry to interrupt. There's some electronics under those wooden panels at the front of the stage, so if she, if she would mind moving back just a little bit, it would be yeah, wait, You're going to be fine. Nobody's going to get wet. <laughs> yeah, and she'll be fine. Only one library got wet, but I promise she's okay. Yes. She'll be fine. The sign, I trust the signs. Sometimes. Ninety-nine <laughs> percent of the time, I do. Okay, so if you're gonna do this one at home, yeah, you probably want to do this over the couch. Okay, I think that'd be the best place to do it. And you're gonna jab your pencil through it, but you're not gonna go all the way through. So this bag is made of small pieces. The smallest unit of matter is an atom. You put together atoms and you get molecules. Um, so those small pieces are gonna hold hands around the pencil. It's also very important to understand that on average, and I think it's a year's time, a human will consume about a gallon of microplastics in the ocean. It's not only in the ocean, but it's in all of our water systems, including lakes and rivers and streams. What are microplastics? They are tiny pieces of plastics the size of the stud of a top of a Lego. One of those little circles, if it's that big, it's a microplastic or smaller. So we consume about a gallon of those per year. So it's very important that we don't throw everything in the, you know, we recycle, recycle. And you know, Americans are all told that we are the big polluters. The biggest polluters of plastic are China and India. They throw more trash in the ocean and plastic than any other country in the world. I'm sure we do our part, but we're not the biggest polluters. Let's do it. Are you ready?